So let's talk about uh, antennas and propagation. So an antenna is an electrical conductor or a system of conductors uh, where transmission is there, reception is there. Transmission antenna, it radiates electromagnetic energy into space and reception, it collects electromagnetic energy from space. So in a two-way communication, the same antenna can be used for transmission and reception as well. Then we have these radiation patterns. Radiation patterns means these are the graphical representation of radiation properties of an antenna. And this is depicted in two-dimensional cross-section. We have this beam width for an antenna that is or half power beam width. So this is measure of the directivity of antenna. What happens? This is a solid angle. It becomes a solid angle and the shape of solid angle, the propagation takes place. It is not, uh, you know, we call it as isotropic means sending electromagnetic radiations in each and every direction equally. And, uh, but uh, since we have the directivity of antenna, this is the beam width and the reception pattern, the receiving antenna is equal to the radiation pattern. Now, there are various types of antennas, one I have just discussed. This is isotropic antenna. This is idealized. It radiates power equally in all directions. All the directions means you can uh, call it as 180 degree or 360 degree everywhere. You know, um, omni, omni direction. Then dipole antennas are there. These are dipole antennas. Uh, they have a half wave dipole antenna, uh, also called as Hertz antenna. And also we have this quarter wave vertical antenna. This is called as Marconi antenna. Then also we have this parabolic reflective antenna. So actually uh, this is an ice, uh, isotropic uh, idealized. So this is for theory purpose. But actually, uh, you know, what we use is dipole antenna. That is Hertz antenna, Marconi antenna and the parabolic reflective antenna. So these are the characteristics of antenna, like antenna gain. What is this antenna gain? This is a power output in a particular direction. I just mentioned that solid angle type of thing. So in a particular direction, uh, compared to that produced in any direction by a perfect omnidirectional antenna. So it is actually, a, you can say, a ratio. This is a power output in a particular direction to the, uh, the actual by uh, any direction by a perfect omnidirectional antenna that is isotropic antenna this ratio is called as antenna gain and the effective area this is the physical size and shape of the antenna so this is how the antenna gain has been represented the relationship between antenna gain and effective area is like this g is the antenna gain this is 4 pi ae by pi square what is this ae this is the effective area of the antenna uh, lambda, as we know, C is equal to N lambda. We can use frequency in the, to uh, this um, relationship we can use here. And this can become, uh, this will become as 4 pi F square AE by C square. Whereas speed of flight, we take it as 3 into 10 to the power 8 milli, uh, meter per second. Uh, then propagation modes for an antenna. We have one uh, ground wave antenna. Then we have sky wave antenna. Then we have this kind of line of sight propagation. Uh, three type of propagation is there: ground wave, sky wave, and line of sight. So this is the uh, ground wave propagation example. You have transmitter, you have receiver, and this is the earth horizon, and this is the single uh, uh, this pro propagation of that signal, and this is ground wave because the uh, waves are actually touching or kissing the ground, and then being received by the antenna. So ground wave propagation, it follows contour of the earth. This is the contour of the earth. And it can propagate considerable distances. Uh, frequency is up to 2 megahertz. The frequency is up to 2 megahertz. For example, we have AM radio. This is sky wave propagation. This is the transmitter antenna. It is uh, sent to the sky because of ionospheric uh, reflection uh, you know it can multiple because after this multiple reflection from earth and the sky it reaches to the antenna this is called the sky wave propagation 
Now the signal reflected from ionized layer of atmosphere back down to earth. A signal can travel a number of hops like this. There are around three hops in here and uh, back and forth between ionosphere and earth's surface. So this reflection effect uh, is caused by uh, refraction. And for example, we have amateur radio, CB radio. This is a line of propagation. There has to be no interference in between so that this antenna can see this antenna and there can be a line of sight propagation. And then this LOS also known as LOS S. Uh, in this LOS propagation, transmitting and receiving antenna must be within line of sight. Uh, satellite communication, which is signal about 30 megahertz, is not reflected by ionosphere. No, we have seen that to the, up to 2 megahertz. Now what to do with this? Ground air communication, the antennas with an effective line of sight due to refraction. So because of this refraction, which is the bending of microwaves by the atmosphere, the velocity of electromagnetic wave is a function of the density of the medium. So when wave changes medium, speed changes, wave bends at the boundary between mediums. This is the line of sight equation. This is the optical line of sight which is given by 3.57 under root h. Uh, what is this d? This is the distance between the antenna and the horizon. right? And uh, this is the effective or radio line of sight. H is the height of antenna. It's where this k is the adjustment factor uh, to account for refraction. We take k as 4 by 3. So this is effective line of sight d is equal to 3.57 under root kh. So maximum distance between two antenna 1, 2. So 3.57 under root kh from one side, 3.57 uh, you know under root kh2 from other side. Add them, you can get the maximum distance between two antennas for LOS propagation, where this is actually the uh, D is the distance between one antenna and the horizon. Again, the second antenna in the horizon. That is why it is under root kh1 plus under root kh2. h1 and h2 is again the antenna of uh, height of antenna of first and second. Now, line of sight wireless transmission impairments. We have attenuation and attenuation distortion. Free space loss is there. Noise is there. Atmospheric absorption. Multipath reflection thermal noise. Let me reiterate or you know, re-say them. There is, there is thermal noise, refraction, multipath, atmospheric absorption, noise, free space loss, attenuation and attenuation distortion. So these are very uh, common to most of the you know wireless transmission. These are the impairments. So what is an attenuation? The strength of signal actually it falls off you know with a distance over a transmission medium. So attenuation factors for unguided media that is, once you send it to, to the atmosphere, there is no guiding. So, for that, receiver signal must have sufficient strength so that circuitry in the receiver can interpret the signal. A signal must maintain a level of sufficiently high. This is this has to be sufficiently higher than the noise to be received without an error. And attenuation is greater at higher frequency, causing distortion. This is the free space loss for ideal isotropic. Antenna PT is the signal power at transmitting antenna. PR is the signal power at receiving antenna. This is given by 4 pi d whole square by lambda square, where lambda is the carrier wavelength. D is the propagation distance between two antennas. C is again the speed of light, and you can just replace this lambda because C is equal to n lambda or f lambda. You can say you can just change and uh, you can get a other. Uh, equation for free space loss. This is free space loss equation. This can be recasted because uh, we compute the this in uh, you know some comparison level that is called the decimal. So this is 10 log pt by pr. Now this is actually our free space loss in the form of decibel. Whenever we want to take decibel, we use 10 log base is also 10, and you place that. Uh, you can say an attribute or characteristics. In this case, we are finding the free space loss. So uh, this will become as uh, 20 log f plus 20 log d minus 147.56 dB. 
again this is a free space loss this free space loss accounting for gain of other antennas this is given by see this is the free space loss uh, for ideal isotopic antenna and this is free space loss which is accounting for the gain of where gain is there so we use 4 pi whole square into d square gr is gain of transmitting antenna gt is the gain of receiving antenna and then uh, lambda square and you can just uh, place uh, other values so that you can get this area ar by 80 this is also given by pi d square ar by 80 ar is the effect area of the transmitting antenna and a uh, transmitting and receiver antenna 80 again by if you want it in db it can be transformed into minus 20 log f plus 20 log d minus 10 log 80 ar plus 169.54 db now there are various noise like thermal noise intermodulation noise crosstalk and impulse noise what is the thermal noise thermal noise is due to the due to the agitation of the electrons uh, it is present in all electronic device and transmission media. This cannot be eliminated, right? There, ha there is. It can be minimized, but it cannot be eliminated. This is actually the func function of temperature. That is why we call it as a thermal noise. Particularly significant for satellite communication. This thermal noise. This is the amount of noise which is to be found in bandwidth of one hertz in any device or conductor, which is given by. N0 is equal to KT uh, and this N0 is the noise power density in watts per 1 hertz in any device. Again, the amount of thermal noise to be found in, in a bandwidth of 1 hertz of any device is increasing by N0 is equal to KT W by hertz, uh, means uh, watt per hertz. So K is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin. The so noise is assumed to be independent of frequency. Thermal noise independent of frequency and thermal noise present in a bandwidth of B hertz can be given by M is equal to KTB. And again, if you want it in decibel watts, you can uh, compute it by minus 228.6 dB watt. This is dB watt plus 10 log T, it is the temperature in Kelvin, uh, plus 10 log B. Again, we you know this is the good bandwidth actually. Now we have other noises also like intermodulation noise, crosstalk and impulse noise. This intermodulation noise occurs if a signal with different frequencies share the same medium. So interference is caused by a signal which is produced at a frequency that is the sum of difference of original frequency. Then we have crosstalk that is unwanted coupling between uh, signal paths. Impulse noise is also there that is irregular pulse or noise spikes. Uh, short duration or uh, relatively uh, of high uh, amplitude like this spike spike like this is the signal and this is a, a spike sharp spike and this is caused by external electromagnetic disturbances or faults and flaws in the communication system now we have a expression for eb by n0 this 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 is a ratio of signal energy per bit to noise power density per hertz again this is the ratio of signal energy per bit to noise power density per hertz. This is also known as, as signal to noise ratio. Uh, this is EB by N0, this is S by R by N0, S by R. For EB, this is S by KTR. So the bit error rate for a, digi a digital data is a function of this EB by N0. Uh, given a value of this EB by N0, to achieve a desired error rate, parameter of this formula can be selected. And as bit rate R increases, transmitted signal power must increase to maintain required MB by NC. There are other impairments also. Atmospheric absorption, water vapor and oxygen contribute to this attenuation. Multipath may the obstacle reflects signals so that multiple copies with varying delays are received. Like uh, one is, this is a building say. One is uh, directly coming, other is coming by reflection so this is reflected signal now it can be plus it can be minus this is multipath then reflection refraction is there bending of radio waves as they propagate through the atmosphere so this is an example of uh, first is this r this is the reflection this is a d which is a refraction of uh, means uh, bending because of this sharp edge 
and this S is scattering this is our lamppost. So multipath propagation we have this reflection, diffraction and scattering. So reflection occurs when a signal encounters a surface that is large relative to the wavelength of the signal and diffraction means it occurs at the edge of an impenetrable uh, body in which body he this uh, cannot in impenetrate it cannot penetrate that is large as compared to the wavelength of radio waves and scattering means it occurs when the incoming signal hits the object whose size is the order of the wavelength of signal on uh, ls then the effect of multipath propagation multiple copies of signal may arrive at different phases as i suggested so if phases had i said that it is plus or minus so if phases add destructively the signal level relative to noise declines making detection more difficult then we have inter symbol interference also ISI. One or more delayed copies of pulse may arrive at the same time as the primary pulse for a subsequent bit. These are the type of fading, fast fading, slow fading, flat fading, selective fading, relay fading and recent fading. Also we have various error compensation mechanism like forward error correction, adaptive equalization and diversity techniques. Forward error, error correction. So transmitter add error correcting code to the data block. So code is function of the data bits actually. The receiver calculates the error connecting code from incoming data bits. So if calculated code matches incoming code, no error is occurred. If error correcting code doesn't match, the receiver attempts to determine bits in error and try to correct it. Then we have this adaptive equalization. This can be applied to transmission that carry analog or digital information, that is analog voice or video, digital data, digitized voice or video. So this is used to combat inter-symbol in interference. And this involves gathering dispersed symbol energy back into its original time interval. The techniques are lumped analog circuits and sophisticated digital signal processing algorithms. Then we have these diversity techniques. Diversity is based on the fact that the individual channels experience independent fading events. Space diversity means techniques which involves physical transmission path. Frequency diversity means techniques where the signal is spread out over a large frequency bandwidth or carried on a multiple frequency carriers and time diversity means techniques aimed at spreading the data over uh, outward time so this is over space this is our frequency this is a time so this was the basic idea about antenna and propagation thank you so much take care of yourself